This clip is about the bridge design pattern. Let's start with an awesome joke about a bridge. What do you call a horse that's fallen off a bridge? Dead! <coughs> okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the bridge pattern. What the bridge intends to do is make two parts of a software system work together. Each of the two parts can have variation, but these variations are independent. If this all sounds really abstract, don't worry about it. Later on, I'm going to show an example that explains exactly how this pattern works. The bridge pattern is one of the more complicated patterns that you're going to see in this course. Like the other patterns, it's based on the principles of object-oriented design. In particular, favor aggregation over inheritance and identify what varies and encapsulate that. If you look at the class diagram, the bridge pattern looks very much like two strategy patterns put together in one diagram. This is certainly how it works, but there is one extra feature in the bridge, which is that these two strategies can use each other without knowing the actual variations that are being used. The bridge forms the connection between two strategies. Let's look at an example of how this works. Suppose we're developing a game that has to work on different platforms, Android, iOS, etc. Each platform has their own graphics engine, but they have subtle differences in the interface. How do you encapsulate this variation? We use an abstract class with inheritance, of course. Say we want to draw a Mario character. So we make an abstract class Mario, and then we create an iOS version of Mario that can draw itself on an iOS device. And we create an Android version of Mario that can draw itself on an Android device. Now, I'd like you to think about what this means in terms of the code. Where in the code will we find duplication? And what do we need to do if we add another platform, say a Nintendo Switch? One thing you might have seen is that the draw methods of both Mario's will be pretty similar. Mario on iOS will probably look just the same as Mario on Android. This means that the draw method for both of these subclasses will contain a lot of duplicate code, which is bad. So as a software designer, your response to the solution is probably, yeah, can we avoid it? Let's redesign it and solve this. In the version you see here, the abstract Mario class has an abstract method called setPixel. The abstract class contains a draw method that uses setPixel to draw the character onto the screen. Then, iOS Mario and Android Mario each provide a version of setPixel that uses the respective platform. The setPixel method in iOS Mario calls the drawPixel method in iOS graphics, and the one in Android Mario calls the related method in the Android graphics engine. Of course, requirements will change, so suppose we need to draw both Mario and Luigi. In order to do that, let's create an abstract class Plumber which then has abstract subclasses, Mario and Luigi, and then two concrete implementations of drawing programs for the Mario and Luigi classes. And this is what we get. We have a drawing program for Mario, one for Luigi, and each of them has a subclass that defines the setPixel method for either iOS or Android, and both of these use either iOS graphics or Android graphics. As a software designer, this design you'd still view as being, yeah. If you need to add a new plumber character to the game, you need to add three new classes. If you add a new graphic platform, you need to add a subclass for every new plumber. What you see here is that the abstraction, which is the different kinds of plumbers, is too tightly coupled to the implementations, which are the different kinds of graphics engines. And finally, there's possibly more code duplication going on here because the concrete 
Lu Luigi and Mario classes may share a lot of the code. Okay then, maybe we need to redesign this. Another option is to introduce two abstract plumber classes, one for each graphics platform. So then you get something that looks like this. So what do you think? Did we solve the problem now? You probably still respond with, mm, yeah, we split up things differently, but the problems are still the same only shifted. There's duplicate code in Android and iOS Mario as well as Luigi. If you introduce new graphics platforms or new plumbers you still need to write many extra classes. This is still too tightly coupled. The bridge pattern proposes a solution for these kind of cases. It decouples abstractions from their implementations. In our case we have different plumbers, the abstraction, that we want to draw with different graphics platforms, the implementations. We want to be able to define new plumbers without touching the, gra the graphics platform classes and vice versa. How do we decouple them? Let's try and derive the bridge pattern ourselves by following the principles of good object-oriented design. Find what varies and encapsulate it favor aggregation over inheritance, and finally, program to an interface, not an implementation. What are the variations? Well, the first variation is that we want to support different kinds of plumbers. The second one is that we want to support different kinds of graphics platforms. We want to be able to draw the plumbers, and the graphics platform support drawing individual pixels. So for both plumbers and graphics platforms, we can then identify what the commonalities are. Plumbers can be drawn, regardless of whether it's Mario or Luigi. And graphics platforms allow you to set pixel colors, regardless of whether it's for iOS or Android. These two abstract classes you see here, plumber and graphics, capture exactly these commonalities. So next, we want to add variation to these commonalities. So let's add a few different kinds of plumbers and a few different kinds of graphics platforms by defining subclasses for them. This is what you get. We have two separate sets of variations encapsulated by abstract classes. Now, let's think about how plumbers and graphics are related and follow the principle favor aggregation over inheritance. Should graphics use a plumber object? Probably not, because graphics doesn't know what kind of plumber it has to draw. The other way around, plumber does use graphics, so that makes more sense. If we draw a plumber, it uses functions from the graphics platform. We can use different graphics platform because the plumber class will program to an interface, not an implementation. And here we are with the final design of the bridge pattern. Two variations, plumbers and graphics, coupled by a bridge, where one abstract class uses the other. How well does this separation work? Let's take a look. As you can see, the only connection happens on the abstract level between plumber and graphics. The implementations are completely separate. So overall, this is the problem that the bridge pattern solves and here you also can read about related consequences. This is a more generic representation of the bridge pattern, how it's structured and how it works. Now as an exercise, compare the bridge and strategy diagrams. What are the similarities and what are the differences? A bridge pattern is basically two strategies, but there is one extra feature. The strategies are connected to each other and they're only connected on one level, which is the abstract level.
Both strategy and bridge are good examples of the principle that if you have a rule to do something, you implement that rule only once. If the rule changes, you only have to update a single piece of code. And the responsibility for the computation resides in a single place. Bridge and strategy both define once what the interface is for each variation. The actual implementations are defined using that variation. They are independent from each other. They're defined only once and they do a single job. This concludes the video about the bridge pattern. If you have any questions, post them in the Teams channel of the course. Thanks for watching. The next clip will be about yet another design pattern. Abstract Factory! Thank <laughs> you.